In this video, let's take an updated look at Mahomes' MVP odds, talk about a former Chiefs receiver who just got released from another team, and answer the question of if the Chiefs should go get him, and then let's dig into the Chiefs' problem with their missed field goals, because according to a very experienced veteran, the problem is bigger than just Harrison Butker and his hurt ankle, and it might actually be somebody else's fault. But first, how about those all right, let's just jump right into this because after the Chiefs beat the Texans in overtime, a couple of cool stats have surfaced. The first one is this. Patrick Mahomes was the highest graded QB in week 15 with a passing grade of 90.5, and he had the highest single game completion percentage in NFL history with a minimum of 40 attempts. Don't sleep on that one, as he went 36 for 41 for 336 yards and two touchdowns in the air, and that is an 87.8 completion percentage, first of all, and second, Mahomes wasn't even done with total stats because he also rushed five times for 33 yards and a touchdown, and with that near-perfect performance, Mahomes is reportedly the sudden MVP favorite at multiple sports books as speculation of an injury to Eagles QB Jalen Hurts runs wild. According to Adam Schefter, Hurts was hurt no pun intended. Hertz was hurt late in the third quarter when Bears defensive end Travis Gibson drove him into the ground, and it's not certain yet if he will play Saturday against the Cowboys due to a sprained shoulder. So Mahomes is edging his way back to the MVP favorite, and as of right now, Mahomes has 4,809 total yards, 38 TDs, and 11 INTs, and Jalen Hurts has a total of 4,219 yards, 35 TDs, and 5 interceptions. And in case you're wondering, that includes both passing yards and rushing yards for both QBs. So Mahomes has 590 more total yards and three more touchdowns, but six more interceptions than Hurts. So I'm going to let you guys decide who the front runner is because all I can say is this. It's pretty close at the moment and the race is basically going to go down to the wire. Okay, in a moment, I want to talk about a former Chiefs receiver who just got released as well as take an in-depth look at the Chiefs kicking problem with other potential problems to it brought up by a former Chiefs veteran. But first, we've got to celebrate the fact that the Chiefs have now officially conquered the West one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years in a row. And that's why I want to thank today's sponsor, the Kansas City Chiefs Pro Shop. We've partnered up and are going to do a cool giveaway exclusively to the HBTC community, aka you guys watching. I'll disclose the giveaway details in a moment, but first, here's a little more about the official pro shop at the Kansas City Chiefs. They have the largest selection of Chiefs gear in the KC area, currently in three locations. At GEHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium, inside the Chiefs Fit Gym in Overland Park, and also at their newest location, Chiefs Pro Shop Plaza, located at the Chiefs Fit Gym on the plaza at the address you can see on the screen. The plaza location is a convenient one to shop at, especially if you're in town for a game and staying at a hotel near the plaza, or just shopping in the area. This is a great way to get the latest Chiefs gear, exclusive items, and to skip the lines at the stadium. And just FYI, you do not have to be a Chiefs Gym Fit member to shop at the Chiefs Pro Shop Plaza location. It's open to the public Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they currently have a sale going on right now until December 24th, excluding jerseys and Oakleys, where you can get 25% off your entire purchase, which is a pretty dope deal. And I can't forget to mention that the AFC West merch like this hoodie I'm wearing right now is available at all three Chiefs Pro Shop locations, so make sure to grab yours ASAP. After all, we've got bragging rights again for the seventh time in a row after people doubting us all off-season long. All right, with that being said, let's talk about this giveaway details that I'm excited to do with the Pro Shop. The winner of this giveaway will win the Hot Off the Press AFC West Championship merch, which includes a hoodie like this, and then also a hat and a t-shirt. And all you need to do is go to Twitter, make sure you're following both me and the Pro Shop, retweet the giveaway post that's pinned to the top of my Twitter profile, and the winner is gonna be randomly selected and announced on December 22nd. A link to the Twitter post is in the description of this video and in the pinned comment on this video. Try to make it easy for you, so no excuses, and let's freaking go get some merch. All right, today, former Chiefs Super Bowl champion and wide receiver Sammy Watkins was released from the Green Bay Packers and will currently go on waivers. If he clears waivers, he'll be free to sign with any other team. And the question I know I'll be getting is, Cole, what about Sammy Watkins for the postseason run? Remember, playoff Sammy, we don't win a ring without him. Yeah, remember that guy? Okay, let's talk about it for a moment. Watkins did play for the Chiefs for three seasons, 2018, 
19 and 20 and was their most productive receiver in the 2018 and 19 postseason runs. But in 2020, he dealt with calf and hamstring injuries, playing in only 10 regular season games and seeing only 23 snaps in the Chiefs Bucks Super Bowl. From there, he went on to the Ravens, playing in only 13 games due to continued hamstring injuries and had just under 400 receiving yards and a TD. In this past offseason, he signed a one year deal with the Packers. You guys got to remember that, right? Because he said in an interview that Mahomes is great, but Aaron Rodgers is on a whole nother level, blah, blah, blah. I know you remember that. And now that the Packers are five and eight, as of when I'm recording this video, prior to them playing on Monday Night Football tonight, it's been an underwhelming experience for all parties involved in Green Bay, to say the least, in regards to Watkins, as he's once again struggled with injuries and was even placed on IR back in September. And upon his return, he struggled to be productive for the team all season long. Here's his total. 13 receptions for 206 yards and zero TDs. Zach Cruz, Cruz, the managing editor for the Packers Wire, shared this today about Watkins. The Sammy Watkins era in Green Bay played out exactly how everyone thought it would, showed some juice early, got hurt, never looked explosive again, and became a non-factor. And so the question is, does Sammy Watkins still have some juice left that'll help the Chiefs in the postseason? And my answer to that is going to be... I mean, maybe, but probably not. I do not think the Chiefs will claim him off of waivers or sign him to the roster. I mean, maybe there's a higher percentage of a chance he signs to the team's practice squad pending a past physical, but I'm just not sure Sammy Watkins is the same guy he was five years ago when he first came to Kansas City. No shade to him. We're grateful for his contributions. Wouldn't have a ring without him. But I did want to address this as I know people would be curious when they hear this news. And I think most of you guys watching, listening, will agree with me that the Chiefs having the highest scoring offense in the NFL, they're not really hurting for more receiving weapons. We all know there's other issues that would need addressed first, especially when you consider the return of McCole Hardman just around the corner. He's actually rumored to return for the Seahawks game, and then Kadarius Toney is back, albeit on a snap count. He played 10 snaps total in the Texans game, five on offense and five on special teams. And because of that, I don't think Watkins is needed. And so let's move on from there to a little bit more good news. And that is that there are no real new injury updates according to Coach Reed after the Texans game. Again, we will find out on Wednesday for sure when the team drops their first injury report for the game against the Seahawks, but thankfully on the outside at least, like no major injuries during the game, nobody carted off, nobody limping, which is great. The Chiefs have been able to stay pretty healthy overall. So while the receiving room and injuries seem to not really be a problem, something that does seem to be a bit more problematic is going to be the Chiefs special teams unit and their issue with missing field goals this season. If my research is correct, the Chiefs have attempted 45 extra points and have missed five of those, making a total of 40. Then they have attempted 29 field goals, missing seven of them, therefore making a total of 22. And here's how that stacks up in comparison to the rest of the league. The Chiefs' extra point percentage is 88.9%, ranking them 29th overall, and their field goal percentage is 75.9%, ranking them 30th overall. Yeah, third from the bottom. So basically, their bottom four in both categories and it is no bueno. Now, obviously, a big part of that is the fact that the Chiefs starting kicker Harrison Butker injured his ankle on the Chiefs opening kickoff week one against the Cardinals on their nice little grassy field. I'm sure you all remember that game. That's the game where safety Justin Reed actually had to step in. He had to finish kickoffs for the day and also went one for two on extra points made. And in that span of time, the Chiefs went through a short stint with kicker Matt Amendola, said goodbye to him, brought in Matthew Wright for a little bit, said goodbye to him as Butker returned probably a little bit too early. But a highlight here about Matt Wright, he kicked a 59-yarder during the Raiders game, which is also a franchise record. Then Butker came back maybe a few weeks later and beat that record, kicking a career-long 62-yarder and resetting the franchise record once again, which was awesome, yes, but Butker has struggled this year since his return. Big picture, it seems fine. Over the last five years, Butker's field goal percentage is 88.95%, which is great. The second highest in the NFL only to Justin Tucker, who was way up at 90.56%. But this year, this is the key. Butker has struggled clearly, only making 76.2% of his field goals, and this has become a more popular subject as of late because a couple weeks ago, Butker missed a field goal with a chance to tie the game near the end of it, 
against the Bengals, and then he missed a game-winning field goal yesterday against the Texans, forcing the Chiefs into overtime, in which they ultimately won, yes, but still, there's been a lot of concerns about Butker and his ability to be reliable since coming back from injury, and I think it's largely in part of him still battling through the injury on some level. He's not listed on the injury report any longer or anything like that, but that does not mean he's not still dealing with some repercussions from the injury, and also could be dealing with mental block issues as well as far as his confidence is concerned. Well, last night, another issue or potential issue was brought up to the surface when former punter Dustin Colquitt took to Twitter with some things to say about the situation. And in case you somehow forgot, Dustin Colquitt was the Chiefs punter for 15 seasons, playing on a franchise record of 238 regular season games. He punted the ball over 1,100 times for over 50,000 yards. Good God. So he's a veteran's veteran and also was the team's placeholder. So I guess it's reasonably safe to say that he has some knowledge in the area. And for some additional context, he was released by the Chiefs on April 28th, 2020, just two days after the Chiefs agreed to terms with rookie UDFA Tommy Townsend, the Chiefs' current placeholder and starting punter. Okay, so Townsend's arrival ultimately led to the release of Colquitt, who by that time had been the placeholder for Butker for three seasons, 2017, 18, and 19. Well, last night, Dustin Colquitt took the Twitter after the game seemingly in defense of Butker when Soren Petro of 810 Sports tweeted out saying, Butker is officially a problem. Well, Colquitt then responded with a very interesting accusation, I guess you could call it. He said, watch the holds and try saying that again. On the extra point, the laces are facing the sidelines. He's screwed him all year. Okay, so Dustin Colquitt is insinuating that Tommy Townsend is screwing Butker over with bad holds on the field goals and the PATs. Well, someone then responded to that saying, wow, Colquitt clearly isn't a Tommy fan. And this is what he responded to that guy. He said, I'm a big fan of his punting, very exceptional actually, but his holding is very average. Then someone else said, interesting theory, but what about 2018 when he missed four PATs and 2020 when he missed six? And then uh, Dustin Colquitt then responded saying, 2020 Tommy was holding you DS, which I think stands for dip stick. We'll just yeah, dipstick. It stands for dipstick. Please do some sort of research before commenting, then followed up with in 2018, he had nearly 30% more attempts, which means more chances to miss. And his final thoughts were this. He's an exceptional punter. If you look back at the holds on the extra point, the laces are facing the sidelines and on the miss 50 plus yarder, he pulled the ball to him at the last second and forced the ball to go to the right. He's been missing the spot all year. And so the veterans veteran of 15 seasons says the blame is not so much on Butker and his hurt ankle, but on the placeholder and Tommy Townsend. Is that true? I have no freaking idea. I mean, I showed you one photo on the screen of the laces facing the sideline, but I saw other kicks that Butker did where the laces were facing front, how they should be, and Butker still missed the field goal or the PAT. Either way, I am no expert on the situation, whereas Dustin Colquitt certainly is, although he's no longer on the team. And if this was really a serious enough issue, talking about Townsend's inability to be a great placeholder, you would think the Chiefs coaching staff would have looked into it and addressed the issue. And I do want to point out that in 2020, when Butker missed six PATs, he also had the highest field goal percentage of any year of his career at 92.6%, which shows an improvement on the year that Townsend became the place kicker, believe it or not. So honestly, man, I do not know what the heck to make of all this because Tommy Townsend even weighed in himself with a tweet this morning saying, Coach Reed preaches this all the time. Don't listen to people outside of the building. They have no idea what they're talking about. Back to work this week preparing for Seattle. And I mean, I take that as a shot right back to Colquitt, basically saying, bro, you don't work here anymore. You have it in a few years and therefore you don't know what's going on behind the scenes and do not know what you're talking about. This is some crazy Punter drama, maybe the first and last I've ever had the privilege of covering here on this channel. To sum it all up, here's my thoughts. I have no idea who's right and how much of the problem is Butker's injury or how much of the problem is Tommy's holding or where it is on the mix of both somewhere in between. But what I do know is this, as I explained above, this season the Chiefs are struggling both in field goal percentage and extra point percentages near the bottom of the league. And something needs to be figured out here, especially before the team goes into the postseason with the goal of another deep run and potentially another Super Bowl ring. That's where I wanna ask you guys your thoughts on all of this. Do you side with Colquitt? with him being the veteran's veteran, or maybe with Tommy Townsend, who says, if you don't work here, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, or are your thoughts maybe something like, it's probably a bit of both, 
but Butker was fine pre-injury, and ultimately, I do not care whose fault it is, just please fix it so we can make game-winning field goals when it matters, especially in the playoffs. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Then, on your way out, make sure to head over to Twitter to follow me and the Chiefs Pro Shop, retweet my pinned contest tweet for the Conquering the West merch giveaway, and until next time, let's go, let's freaking go. How about those? (laughs) 